Hello everybody, this is Moses from Wilderness Cave, and we are finally going to continue the series, or the lessons, of how to play solo with Warhammer Fantasy Roleplay. It could be used for any uh, system, I'm just choosing Warhammer, because it's one of my favorites. And my, my first um, role-playing game in the late 80s, uh, the first edition, I love the system a lot. And the setting, of course, as you can see how grim and dark this looks. Uh, little key things before we continue, so uh, if you haven't watched... Uh, episode one, I'll put a link right now above or in the screen right now so you can start watching from there. Also, for ones that just watched episode three and or if remember how it ended, uh, we uh, ended with uh, Hayden here, our hedge witch, um, at a farmhouse. Uh, the farmhouse background picture I lost in this course of, I don't know, it's been three months, I think. Uh, so I just, I created another one and uh, this is generated. Uh, I'm, I, I do pencil work, uh, artwork, as some of you may know from my other um, series like Dragon Bane and uh, upcoming Pirate Borg season finale. They'll all be drawn out. Uh, but I need to, with this series, I want to hurry it up. I, I, I don't want to take my time drawing all these scenes out. Uh, it's a lot faster just a lot faster just to generate them. So let's continue. Uh, so with that out of the way, so you know, so nobody goes, hey, wait, this is not where we uh, ended. It doesn't look the same. It's relatively the same. There's the farmhouse. Here's a road. You know, same, same, uh, same type of image. Okay, so now to recap, for anybody that, uh, if you remember, to recap, Hayden here fled the tunnel with a secret uh, passageway that was created under Ingo's. Um, the barkeep, which uh, unfortunately is gone now because of the witch hunter, Helmut. Uh, she found her way through the tunnel and out through um, an apothecary shop, one of her um, close friends, or, or the apothecary owner is friends with the hedge folk. So she knew this, being a hedge witch, and got out of the, um, the tr secret trap door in the cellar of that apothecary shop, and then got out of the Ubersreich's walls and we rolled on a, I think it was a D4, few things, few um, random things, and the farmhouse was uh, chosen, so now she's at the farmhouse. Let me, oops. So prior to beginning this episode, uh, Hayden has uh, enough experience points to do a few advances, so I did do those off camera, obviously, and uh, she has those things. That's really good because she's going to need them, <laughs> uh, being solo, that is, in the, you know, in this old world. It's not uh, so kind to uh, solo players. Now, in solo, you could also play in a group. You could play as, you know, as many people as you uh, can handle. Uh, the most I can handle in a party is about four to five, and I've done that in this channel as well. So with Hayden's token, I changed it. One, because I lost the original token, but also so it's a little bit more clear of what she looks like. Um, she is a hedge witch, her history. She was born and raised in, with the hedge folk, but for some re when she was young, very young, for some reason she was sent to Ubersreich to live there for a long time, I mean, till now. Um, probably, let's say, 15 to 20 years she lived in Ubersreich, but her first, uh, you know, five, six years old, let's say, she lived with the hedge folk. So she has those roots. She has an odd connection to nature that she didn't really understand. She knew she was a hedge witch and was told, don't tell anyone in Ubersreich you're a witch or a hedge witch, you know, especially a hedge witch because uh, um, uh, witch hunters are, are, go after them quickly and dispatch of them, as we know, if you've been following in this series. Um, so she's told not to say anything, uh, but she doesn't know why, and she doesn't know why she was sent to Ubersreich. Um, so we hopefully will find out all this type of stuff. That's her backstory. I don't know why. I just thought of those things. Sounds pretty interesting. I don't know why though. So hopefully if she survives these, uh, this sessions or the sessions after, we can find out more about her life. So, so let's continue now. So right now we're going to use Mythic. Uh, chaos Factor is six. We're going to state the scene right now. The scene setup I have is Hayden at the farmhouse. There's thunderstorms going on. There's a barn nearby, I don't know, somewhere around here is a barn. And Hayden wants to go further down the road. Right here or probably this way, probably this way. She doesn't want to stop. I think she's too frightened 
Um, this is where you as a, now remember this is how to play solo. It's not just, uh, hopefully you're entertained, but it's not just for entertainment. This is actually trying to um, educate you as much as possible how to play solo and why I would think to myself uh, on the scene setup, which is your really your only solid choice you get with solo playing is your scene setup. After that, it's dice rolls uh, can change everything. So with the scene setup of going down the road, the reason why I thought of that is because I think Hayden, if I was her, Hayden doesn't trust anyone right now. She doesn't know what's happening, and she doesn't know if there's maybe a witch hunter here, or the uh, great amount of the witch hunters in the Empire is out to find her, and they went everywhere, even surrounding Ubersreich, um, in the surrounding areas. So she just wants to be away from people as much as possible. Yeah, she's, she's quite scared, but you know, they, they, she's in the real world, so there's going to be people, so she's going to have to meet somebody down the line, somewhere. Uh, when will that happen? Don't know. Uh, we're going to find out, though, with this dice roll. We have to do a modified with Mythic. The rule is we have to see if the scene I just stated of Hayden trying to go down this road, bypassing this farmhouse, um, is going to happen. So our chaos factor is 6. So we have to roll a d10, and if we roll a 6 or under, the scene I just stated has been modified. So let's see, a d10 right here, a 6. So it's been modified. Just wonderful. And of course it's an even number, a six. So that means it's an interrupt. It's not just an altered scene, it's an interrupt. And that means we have to roll on our random event focus table to see what happens. So with an altered scene, if I rolled an odd, so if I rolled a five, three, or a one, I would think of something that makes sense, okay? With an interrupt, being a six and even an interrupt, you have to roll. You don't have that choice anymore, logically. You have to roll on this and hopefully we roll on something, something pretty good, I hope. So this is a D100, so let's see what we get here. A three, a remote event. A remote event. Interesting. Let's roll on the event meaning subject and action tables. Let's find out what that, what that could mean. Now let's move this to the sides here. Let's see what that could mean. So D100 roll. So we have, I may have to write this stuff down. So we have a, the subject, 55, suffering, just great, 77, deceive. You know, I had an idea on the next scene. And the idea I had was Hayden goes down the road and is surrounded by, you know, accident. They don't know that they're surrounding her. She just went down the road and all of a sudden this basically company or cavalry battalion or company surrounded her you know by they don't know she's there but she's surrounded and she's kind of trapped um she she doesn't want to move because you know it's 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 the military it's the army and she doesn't want to get caught but i wonder if she thinks of something so hayden chooses to go down the road and the idea i had is that she, like I just said, she gets surrounded by a military force and she's trapped and she doesn't know how to get out of it yet. We're gonna, I have a few ideas of how, but that's, that's my idea for this next scene. So she bypassed this farmhouse and continued. It, it might have been better to go into the farmhouse, so. But this interesting interrupt scene might make things a little bit interesting. So the remote event is where we're headed to and hopefully Hayden can think of a thing to um, solve their problem that they're having. Let's see. So now Hayden, so not, like I mentioned, the next scene was going to be where Hayden, if she didn't go into the farmhouse, um, the next scene was going to be that Hayden gets surrounded by cavalry 
And there's an issue that the Calvary's having. A lot of their horses are becoming sick, very sick. They don't know why. And a lot of them, a lot of these soldiers, because they can't travel now, and in this area, there are animals, but they're not plentiful, and it's very dark in this location, so it's very difficult for them to hunt. Even though they do have, like, a ranger here, um, they do have rangers, they do have a few other things, not just cavalry, to help out. You know, like rangers going through the, the woods to find the best locations to travel before they send horses. Um, but they, they're not finding much food, so they're very hungry, they're running out of rations, and now there's, their horses um, are sick. And that plays into the suffering deception, the sieve, the suffering. So how I get that now, I didn't really think of how that could happen. Maybe they, you know, were just sick or they ate something that was bad, like, you know, uh, moldy oats or something. I don't know, something wrong. But maybe suffering the sieve, maybe their current animal keeper or a person that takes care of the horses is actually... Uh, a spy and he's slowly making these horses sick not just dying right away because that would you know they would point out hey after I sent the horses to you they died so something's wrong with you no he, this individual is slowly making them sick so it looks like they are just you know sick it doesn't look like anything um, was uh, ill-footed or ill-minded so regardless so Hayden is here obviously you could tell you could tell and there's a ranger and a horse, um, a horseman right here. So let's say they're having a conversation. This is what you would have to think. You would, you have to bring in for solo now how to play solo. Um, be reminded that when you play scenes, you want a lot of individuals so the room feels full. Like right here, it's a lot of people, but you don't want these two, three more over here. I mean tokens, you know. Two more over here, like you have all these conversations happening. It's too much for one person to handle, okay, playing solo. So you just want to keep it simple. So there's a whole group of people that are having conversations, and I most likely will put sound effects and stuff like that so it sounds like there's a lot of things going on. There's still thunder going on and lightning and, you know, rain. But the only people you can truly hear, or hopefully Hayden can hear them, being far farther away, hiding behind this log, um, yeah, are these two individuals individuals so I hope she could hear what they're talking about let's let's try to see so Hayden has a lot of petty magic spells and one of them is eavesdrop uh, has a range of willpower yards so she's well within the 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 range uh, target of one so I'm only have to target only one of them I can't target both so I can't hear a conversation going back and forth I can only hear one person you can hear what your targets say as if you were standing right next to them so let's see if Hayden can hear what the horseman is saying. Now the way I play petty magic spells is that there's no real bad ill effect rolling uh, a failure on your uh, magic rolls. Because with petty magic it's a CN0, so that means there's nothing that you can use in, in terms of all the times I've played, uh, first edition in this one, and a little bit of second. Um, if not, let me know in the comments below, but there's nothing you could really do other than me home home brewing this rule or you know making this a house rule of mine it doesn't make sense to have something really bad happen like a miscast table if you roll a failure on a petty magic you know like you're trying to turn a light on or a candle on or distinguish one and you might be able to get your head blown off <laughs> or something like that it doesn't make any sense yes magic is always dangerous but in my game with petty magic I'll probably have something bad happen, like it made a sound that I didn't want to make. But like, let's say the last time she used Petty Magic, she failed terribly. Uh, it was at 100, I think, which is a, all, it's a, always a failure at that point. And if it was a bigger spell, it would be a, uh, a fumble, I believe. Uh, any doubles or anything ending with a zero is a fumble on a failure of a roll for Magic. With Petty Magic, I keep it simple. It's a CN of zero. Um, I don't go to a miscast table with them. Um, I just I just think it just makes it a little bit faster. Uh, obviously, with you know the CNs going up uh, for spells, obviously if I roll a double, basically fumble a double, or I think it's ending in a zero above my um, a failure of a magic roll, uh, then I would go to a miscast table unless I use some type of ingredient or um, you know silver or whatever it was to uh, 
negate those uh, miscasts, uh, major and minor. Uh, but, but just from now on, so everybody knows, if it's not specifically said in the rule book, my own house rule is, if you fail a petty magic spell, the worst that can happen is a, maybe a sound may erupt, like, a, some, like she's trying to stay quiet and um, some kind of sound happened where it could give her position away. So we don't want that to happen right now. If she fails this magic roll, there's going to be a sound, and now we have to roll a perception check of uh, these two soldiers to see if they could find Hayden. So her language magic is 48, so hopefully we roll that on a d100 or under. Here we go. 24, so that is a success and um, a plus two and a success level. So that's, that's really good, that's really good. So she does hear the horsemen, and because of the plus two, I will say that um, if you're playing solo, what would a plus two mean? Or would a plus two mean even if you're in a group? But if you're playing solo, what would a plus two success level mean? The horseman gives a lot more information, more than I would have done prior to rolling that magic roll. So we hear the horseman. So she casts a spell. Now every spell has to be spoken. So she just, with petty magic, the CN number for me, the lower it is, the quieter she can say it. The higher the CN number, the more she has to scream out the, the, the spell name or whatever, or, or moving her hands or whatever she has to do. It has to be more elaborate. So let's say Hayden whispers eavesdrop and then can hear the horseman. Now remember, she can only hear the horseman, not the ranger. So the horseman talks to the ranger and says, did you find any food? And now the ranger is saying something. Hayden cannot hear it. And the horseman says, that's, that's impossible. There's no food any, around anywhere, not even mushrooms. And the ranger says something, and the horseman goes, on top of all this, my men are hungry. We haven't eaten two to three days. And on top of that, our horses are sick. Remember what we spoke about earlier. Our horses are sick. Haven't you seen? And then the ranger says something, and the captain goes, what do you mean a horse already died? Had to be put down. It was lame, and its skin was peeling? Why am I made aware of this now? It just happened this morning. It's a godforsaken place. I don't know what's going on. Why are all of our horses getting sick? That doesn't make any sense. Eavesdrop only lasts about the, I guess it's the initiative bonus in minutes. So initiative bonus is three. So three minutes, three minutes went by. So now Hayden knows two things. They're hungry, the whole entire army, and the horses are sick. So there's two things that we can do. Now, nothing's happening now. We don't have to worry about a perception check. Um, nothing's happening there. The captain is uh, not focused on anything else right now. He's, a little, he's panicking a little bit, okay? And now everybody's hungry, so they're not really prone to like, okay, let me do a perception check. You know, let me look around. They're just holding their stomach and, uh, stomachs and their stomachs are rumbling. Um, <laughs> you could imagine it's the thunderstorm hits and then the stomach rumbling noise happens afterwards. It's like two thunderstorms or two thunder, thundering sounds with this amount of people. So she could do a couple things here. One, she can do something to help her run away from this. Or two, she can reveal herself to help out these horses. Now remember I told you, she has a connection with nature. She could feel the animals and nature around her. With, she's, she's hedge folk, she, she lived in it. Sort of like druids, um, but she lived through it. The hedge folk, I believe the lore of them, I have to read more about them, but the lore of them is they live on the hedge, AKA the edge of the forest. They, they, they go to the city sometimes undetected and, and you know, trying to you know, clean up themselves, and they can go back to the forest, etc. Druids, basically, do not want anything to do with the civilization. So I think I have two options. One is she reveals herself, but I can help. And I might be able to save myself in that way. And the other one is I can use petty magic spell 
produce small animal and I could produce like let's say a rabbit and she produces a rabbit and it just runs like I just basically I don't throw it but you know or she doesn't throw it but like I scoot it along and it just runs scared this way and all these soldiers are like a rabbit and they just start the commotion to try to you know get this rabbit to eat um, I could while that's happening obviously I could run away now or she can reveal herself and do animal care of 47. Animal care, there's a lot to it. But one of them is, let me look it up. It's an advanced skill. You could spot an illness. You could understand reasons for discomfort, determine the quality of an animal, heal, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. You could do a lot of stuff. So I can spot an illness and maybe I can understand as well or she can understand as well what's happening and you know I would think this you know it sounds like this person's in charge um, the way he's talking you know my men uh, I think if I save these horses now Hayden believes this individual is a leader of these troops because he was saying my men um, I think she's thinking to herself if I could heal these horses I might be able to um, not be, you know, uh, taken into custody for being a hedge witch, let's say, or, you know, or whatever. Maybe they, uh, she doesn't know if there's a witch hunter in here or whatever. She doesn't want any problems. She doesn't know if her name is throughout the empire now, uh, which could possibly be not just among, not just among the uh, witch hunters. But I think this captain, or at least she thinks this captain, would forgive some of that if she found out how to heal these horses and he might reward me somehow. So, in one way, I can do, um, yeah, she can do a reward route, hopefully a reward, or another way, I could set one poor little rabbit down this road and run for it. But I'm all alone. And remember again, like I was mentioning about her being hedge folk, she, she's, she's hurting inside, yet she won't be hurting if an animal, like a little rabbit, gets caught and eaten. But, you know, for these, that's only one, and there's probably, let's say, 100 horses here or more, maybe 200 horses that are all sick, and she feels their sorrow, she feels their pain. She's like, basically, I could just touch it, and I could, you know, hopefully roll correctly or successfully, and I could find out what's happening to them and help them, these poor suffering animals. But not that suffering bunny if she lets one loose, though. <laughs> I think, though, that she is going to show herself because she cannot get past the suffering that she's feeling from all these horses. So she's going to walk out. She's going to walk out right now. And right away, the ranger, now she could hear the ranger, she's close enough. The ranger says, who are you? Stop, halt. And the horseman turns around and says, who are you? And... Hayden says, I'm just here to help. Ooh, you know, they are part, of, they are in the forest and they do, they do know that there's hedge folk around or they could, you know, they know that it could happen. So I think it's safe to say for her, I mean, she's looking around, she doesn't see any witch hunters, you know, those pointy hats and pistols. Uh, she's not seeing that. And she, she's still alive, so she knows that if, she, if there was a witch hunter, she would already probably be dead right now if there was one in just the surrounding area close by. So she tells the horseman, Sir, I couldn't help but hear, he says, Captain, to you. And Hayden corrects herself. Captain, I couldn't help but hear that you said your horses are all sick. And, and here we go. The captain is not... The captain is not uh, ignorant. He's intelligent. The captain knows, okay, this has to be hedge folk. She looks like hedge folk. Uh, but she looks, you know, hedge folk are typically, you know, like maybe have wrinkles and they're kind of like, their skin is really leathery from being outside and in the sun all day. Kind of, you know, that, that type of um, stereotype, basically. Uh, but she's, you know, soft and you know, very pretty and young. So he's kind of like, are you really a hedge folk? Are you, are you a hedge witch? Doesn't, you don't look like one, basically. 
Uh, but regardless, she's, you know, dressed in the attire. He keeps a close eye on her, but, you know, still responds that, yes, my horses are deathly sick. One just had to be put down this morning, and the rest, I'm afraid, are going to succumb the same consequence. And Hayden responds with, I may be able to help, but I would have to touch one of your horses to help. And hopefully I can sense what is wrong with them and spot any illnesses, if there is any that I can detect. And the ranger, you know, whispers in the captain's ear, basically, Captain, you sure about this? I've never seen such a beautiful... <laughs> I've never seen such a beautiful hedge witch in my life. <laughs> and I'm always in the forest, in which he is, he's a ranger. I'm always in the forest. Hedge witches don't look like her. She might be a spy. Oh my word. Okay, so. So the captain whispers back. I understand. And I will take what you said at heart. I still have to see if this individual can help our horses. With the way things are going, it's better to try something than not. And the ranger, you know, tilts his head down and nods. You're right, Captain. So, the Captain looks back at Hayden and says, okay, uh, you can touch, uh, he points over here, this horse over here. Uh, this horse is very sickly, we do not know what's happening. The previous one I was told this morning, the previous one that was put down, its skin was peeling and it was very sick, sickly and it didn't want to eat or drink and it just died this morning. So Hayden heads over to that horse and the horse is sort of, you know, <laughs> balking back and jumping and you're making a lot of noise. Um, but all of a sudden the horse sees Hayden's eyes and the horse slowly calms down. Hedge folk, you know, connection with animals slowly calms down and and actually even gets down on the ground you know like that's very um odd behavior for these uh military horse horses they just she this horse just lays on the ground and the captain and the ranger notice this and they uh, they look at each other eye to eye and in their mind they're probably saying okay she may be a very beautiful woman but the animal is acting like she's part of them. So they kind of believe her story of being a hedge witch, uh, even though she does not look like one uh, physically. Okay, now Hayden puts her hands on the horse. And <laughs> let's see, animal care. It's a 47 roll, so this might, be, this might go very well for Hayden right now. If she successfully rolls this, and it depends on the SL too, the higher the SL success level, the better, the better the reaction from the captain. Here we go. D100 roll. 27, success and a success level of two. That's really good. That's really good. So, uh, now how can I roll? You know, I have so many random tables. That's another thing if you want to play solo, have a lot of random tables. I don't want to get out of the screen to go to another one and find one, and I have nothing ready for me right now on the, on the table that I'm sitting at. So a little side note here, right when I finished the episode, <laughs> I got a doorbell ring and uh, the books that I just ordered came in. These are the perfect books for rolling for random things. Uh, the World Builder here handbook, Table Fables, and then the, the, the amazing collection of just random tables that I could have rolled on to make it a little more random instead of me just thinking of it in my head. You know? God, just this would have been perfect for this episode. But anyways, uh, let's get back to my uh, past self and let's continue the story, shall we? Um, but I can just roll, let's see if I can roll in another action and subject and try to interpret um, what the sickness could have been. But it's a su success level of two. So she's really gonna know what is wrong and probably how they became sick. So subject and action, let's roll on them and find out. Here we go. D100 for the subject. 23. Balance, action. 64. 
spy. Oh, look at that. Look at that, everyone. Isn't it amazing how solo works? Isn't that amazing? God, wow, spy. Jeez. Okay, so balance and spy. That's very interesting. And it kind of goes with the idea I had prior to rolling this. So remember that Hayden has a plus two success level. So that's probably going to help her determine the only way this could happen. It's not just she knows why they're sick, but she knows how they got sick with a plus two. And it, the more success levels, it would be even more apparent. Like she would find the plant between their teeth. Like this is what they've been eating and it got them sick, etc. So Hayden touches the horse and spots the illness and why the horse is sick, how it got sick. And she knows the, the tactics that was used. So after Hayden touches the horse, she notices an odd color on the face and lips of the horse. It's a color that shouldn't be on a horse. Let's say it's a, 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 a dark purple. There's a dark purple color on the lips of the horse. And she looks to the horses to the left and the right and notices all the horses have the same color on the lips. And that's not natural. After she goes close to the horse and she doesn't want to touch it per se, but she goes close to inspect it or maybe smell it, she could smell poison. She's, remember, Remember, balance and spy. Now, balance balance could be what the spy is trying to do, create balance. Like, the spy is part of, like, let's say, the enemy of, these, of the empire. Uh, we don't know who or what. And they're hopefully, with this tactic of killing the horses, um, they create balance So for um, an advantageous attack. So with all these horses, the, the spy wherever he belongs with, or uh, um, a group he belongs with, won't be able to beat the, this big army. So if they take out the horses, they create balance. So the spy is doing something to create balance amongst, uh, so they could get a, a military ad, uh, advantage. That's what I'm interpreting it as. Let me know what you think in the comments below. Balance and spy. There's all types of things you could think of. But to keep it simple, that's what's happening. The spy is trying to create balance. And she knows that scent and that color is not from nature, or at least from this area, you know, the hedge folk area. And she knows that uh, this is a poison. This is uh, created. This is not of nature. This is, this is concocted or like multiple things from nature and put together. This is not something natural and can also sense that the horse is very sick. Um, maybe more than it appears, like inside of its body, it's maybe there's internal bleeding or something. She notices, she can sense it after touching the horse's like uh, side or the, the horse's ribs. She can sense something. So she comes back to the captain and tells the captain, Captain, I, I do know what happened to your horses. And the captain replies, what happened? What did you notice? There's a purple color on the lips of the horse and the horses nearby that one. That purple color is not of nature, origin. I believe somebody has poisoned your horses and the scent as well does not smell of natural origin. I believe this is poison, Captain. And the captain goes, who would want to poison my horses and how would they do it and then Hayden goes um, they could easily add poison to the food captain and the captain says I see and tells the ranger go around and inspect all the food if you see a purple color in the food I want to be notified immediately and he also screams out to you know some of the lieutenants or, or other officers or anybody around find me the, the horse caretaker now you know, he's getting angry. He wants to know if the horse caretaker knows anything or, you know, is the spy. The captain looks at Hayden and says, Hedge Witch, and she interrupts and says, Hayden, sir, my name is Hayden. And the captain apologizes, my apology. Hayden, you have helped me greatly. Let me know if there's anything I can do to help you. 
There is no witch hunters among us, as I know they are after all of you hedge witches. But since you have helped me, I will conceal your whereabouts of these parts. And if I am asked, I will not tell that I met a hedge witch on my travels. But there must be something I could do for you. You have saved my entire cavalry. All of my horses would have been dead and we would have been dead in the water if we were attacked. And at that moment, let's say the ranger heads out, let's make him smaller, heads out and checks all the, the feed of the horses somewhere in this area. And the captain continues saying, please let me know, let me know of anything. And Hayden's thinking and thinking, a little time goes by, you know, like 10, 15 seconds. And the ranger comes back, let's make him a little bigger. The ranger comes back and says, Captain, and the captain looks at the ranger, yes, what have you found? The hedge witch, and the captain interrupts, says, her name is Hayden. <laughs> Sorry, captain. Hayden is correct. All the food has that purple coloring in it, and it smells dreadful, like poison. She is correct, sir. And the captain looks at Hayden and asks, I am not going to wait any longer, even though you did help me. I would like to know how I can help you. Please let me know now, or forever hold your peace. <laughs> so what can Hayden ask for? I wonder if Hayden can ask for a horse. She got to get out of here as fast as possible. And she is headed towards the head, hedge folk. That's where she's headed towards. But it's still a long ways away. I wonder if the captain would give a horse. Let's ask that question. Let's go to the fate chart. Let's get the fate chart in the center. Make it a little bigger so you guys can see. Okay, now we are at a chaos factor of six. So six is right here. Uh, the lower you go, the more likely a yes answer will happen. So the question is, the question Hayden's going to ask, can I um, have a horse? I need to get back to my people that are quite far from here. And the captain thinks about it. And let's say, boy, he really, he, she really helped him. I want to do 50-50, but with the 2SL and really helping him, I'm gonna go to likely. So 75 or under, he's going to give her a horse to travel on. Let's see, D100 roll. Almost, almost look, if I did 50-50, it would have been a no, but something else would have happened. It would have been a no, but I'll do this for you. But a 68 on a 75 or below, it's a yes. So the captain gives Hayden a horse. So the captain looks at Hayden and says, yes, of course, without you, all of my horses would have probably perished. And who knows what would have happened to us in this unforgiving land. I thank you, hedge witch, Hayden. You will not be forgotten. Only when a witch hunter asks me if I know your whereabouts, then I would have forgotten you. And they nod and shake hands. They shake hands and, um, smile and uh, the captain offers that horse right here and tells her that the horse you have touched is the one you can take. I hope you can nurse it back to health as I will mine, but I will have my best people on it and one of the things that looks like needs to be done is removing the food source. So I wish you well, take care of one of my noble steeds and pray Sigmar. <laughs> and the hedge witch is like, yeah, pr pray Sigmar. <laughs> So, and then they, then he goes off, he goes off in the distance and goes to that food area and wants to inspect it further. So they both go, the ranger and the captain and the hedge witch, Hayden, jumps on the horse and goes off. And that will end this session or lesson of how to play solo with Warhammer Fantasy Roleplay. So I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you learned a lot. Um, I did, I felt like I spoke a little bit too much explaining a few things, but I got to keep in my mind that this is how to play solo. So the more I talk relatively on the topic of uh, what I'm talking about at that moment, 
the better I think it's going to be for this video. You could always fast forward. Or now I'll put some um, timestamps if I remember as well to help out. But uh, so now with Mythic. So with Mythic, uh, we are a chaos factor of six currently. But things went well, uh, wouldn't you say? Things went well. I didn't think they would, to be honest. I thought. Um, I think if she didn't roll, if she rolled a really bad roll, let's say like a negative four or above on the SL or uh, SL negative four SL or above, or below really negative six negative four. I think on the uh, animal um, care, I think w this would have been really bad. They might have blamed the the witch on why all these horses were sick, you know. Uh, so, but everything went well, so I'm going to put the chaos factor down to five. So that's where we started with. That's where you always start with, with Mythic. Uh, characters, list of characters. Uh, you know, I didn't get another name. I didn't get another name. We have Tunnel Guard without a name, and we have a Captain. <sighs> captain of Cavalry, whatever. Cavalry. And a Ranger of Cavalry. That doesn't make sense, but whatever. So maybe we'll meet them up someday, but we don't have their name, but they know who I am. They know my name. That's more important, I guess, in a way. Uh, any new threads? Find her way back to hedge, um, hedge folk. Find her way back to the hedge folk. And as for the spy, I don't think um, Hayden needs to, like, you know, part of a thread. Like, let's find out who the spy is. Why would they do this? That's out of her realm right now. Let these individuals take care of that. Um, which I'm very certain they're going to be taking care of a certain somebody. The animal caretaker. Um, or they're just going to, you know, interrogate him and find out what happened. You don't know. Maybe it most likely wasn't. You know, it, it, it could be uh, one of all these people, you know. You don't know. We, and maybe we'll never find out. That's be up to a dice roll. Any more threads? No. I think uh, find hedge folk is good. Chaos factor, list of characters. Um, I think that's it. I think that is it. We did well, or Hayden did well. Good for her. Good for her. Now she's on a horse, but she needs to get the horse. Oh, yes. Let's add a thread. Heal the horse. Heal horse she needs to heal this horse so that's that's gonna be uh, tricky I don't know how she's gonna exactly do that we'll find out we'll find out maybe she has to find somebody maybe she knows somebody she hasn't been in the woods for a very long time in her life she was when she was young and she you know slowly you know like kind of like vacationing but you know she senses that I need to be part of the woods so she kept on going to the woods but she only went to like just uh you know frolic around and maybe she was with a few friends and just but every time she her bare foot touched the soil she felt a connection uh she's quite unique um in my mind she doesn't know that in my mind she's quite unique that's how i want to play this character uh how i don't know i don't know Every, everybody's really unique in their own way but something special about her um something special about her uh, as for, yeah, before I forget, now we know that Helmut, the witch hunter, is in the tunnel, the secret tunnel. Does he go all the way to the guard that helped Hayden? Or does he figure out, okay, this is a secret tunnel, head back up and then go get witch, more witch hunters and go back in the tunnel? Or alert the Empire that the secret tunnel, I don't know what's going to happen. I don't know what's happening with that. Uh, we'll have to continue that. Uh, side, uh, I guess a side quest in a way, or a side action, or a side event at another time. But Helmut is still in play. I didn't forget about that witch hunter. Um, okay, da, 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 da. I think that's enough. Let me know if there's any questions below or anything I got wrong using Warhammer Fantasy Roleplay. Remember, I haven't played this in a long time. I played in the 80s, the first edition, and I'm trying to get back into fourth edition. I love it a lot. It's my third favorite role-playing system ever. It used to be second. It dropped down. Um, because Avatar Legends is my number one now. <laughs> Side note on that. Um, but if I did anything wrong, like really wrong, let me know because I don't want to continue doing that. Re but remember, this is how to play solo, not how to play Warhammer. <laughs> so please be kind. <laughs> Everybody's really nice. They've been really nice to me on the comment section over this, what has it been, year and a half doing this. So happy gaming, everybody. Bye.